All right guys, this is Jake Berkey from Rock Rods Videos and Busted Knuckle Films. Today we wanna to talk a little bit about safety belts. And because we don't know a lot about safety belts, we brought in a professional to talk to us about this. This is Chris from ISP Seats. He has a lot of experience in the industry. He's a professional in the industry, and I couldn't think of anybody better to bring us into this topic. So Chris, uh, let's talk a little bit about the different types of safety belts. Well, I wanna, I wanna say I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you invited me in. And the biggest thing I like to do is, is educate people on the basics of the seat belts because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. There's a lot of different systems. People don't know they have the ability to do different things. Just like pull-up lap belts as opposed to pull down. Mm -hmm. Pull-up belts are a lot easier for you to work, especially if somebody's reaching inside the car and pulling and helping you. As opposed to the, uh, uh, the pull-downs, kind of gets onto your hip and into your seat and it kind of sometimes helps you not get real tight. So the pull-ups usually get you nice and, and snug a lot better. Okay, good deal. So um, I know whenever I'm shopping for belts a lot of times, um, there's a couple different systems. There's like a cam lock system, and then there's a latch type system. There's five points and four points, and there's the Y in the back and the seven points. Talk to us a little bit about what the different systems are. All right, well, the one thing is I want to express is a cam lock or a rotary style system, which the belts actually slip in and clip into the mechanism is not what you want to use in off-road. Okay. The dirt, the mud gets in there. These things have little springs and mechanisms inside it and it can very easily get clogged up. You think the belt's in there, you hit your first hill and you find out it's not locked in. That's not a scenario nope. you want to deal with. No, absolutely not. Going with the old latch and link style system, it's a, it's a proven system. It's basic. It's easy to understand and control. And this is really what you want to stick with with the dirt application. Awesome. Uh, that's great. That's great information because a lot of guys don't know that. And if you get dirt inside there and your seatbelts pop off, that's no bueno. So that's definitely a good topic. Appreciate that. Now, one thing I want people to understand is the difference between a 3 point, 4 point, 5 point, 6 point, 7 point harness system. 3 point system is basically what your street vehicle has or you see stock on a razor, your lap belt and the one it crosses over the top of your shoulder. For riding around, having a little bit of fun, that's okay. Uh, when we start hitting some hills and doing some jumps and really starting to stress out our equipment, this ain't what you want to retain your body. And retention is what it's all about. A four-point system, it retains your lap belts and has two shoulder belts, but the problem is your pelvis is the strongest part of your body. It can take over a 7,000 pound load. If the lap belt moves up into your abdominal cavity, Seven, eight hundred pounds, you can have internal injuries. Okay. So you need that five-point belt. To the hold it five point, if, you're, if you think of a five-point belt, it's an extension of the shoulder harnesses. This configuration, you can see here how this will hold you down. Mm -hmm. So the five-point is really crucial if you're in a rollover situation. Now, the one thing that the five-point doesn't do is it doesn't lock the pelvis in. And what I mean by that. This line of direction, your force going this way, that's not really what you want because it's known to rack the gnats. Yeah. Because you're moving forward, what we do is we have a six point system. Okay, here's your five point, it's an extension of your system, but these six points actually mount into the bottom of the seat. They wrap the inside of your thighs. Now we've got two belts holding your pelvis back. And what we do is we want to reduce movement. Your pelvis being the center of your mass when you're setting down, if I can reduce an inch of movement in your pelvis with your head being the end of the fulcrum, we can reduce as much as five or six movement, uh, inches of movement in your head. So locking your pelvis is a key to me. I build seats and I want to be in control of your body so you don't get hurt. It starts with a seat belt system. That's the heart of any seat belt, uh, safety system is your seat belt. If you're moving around, my seat ain't gonna do nothing for you. All right, Chris, so a lot of times when customers are asking me about safety systems and things, they, they wanna know what the difference between a polyester and a nylon. So like, what materials are the best ones to use and, and why do we use nylon versus polyester or polyester versus nylon? Well, a good example of nylon is if you've ever had a yard chair that's set out in the sun and you go to fall, uh, set in it and you fall right through it. That's typical nylon. Nylon dry rots very easily, very quickly and it's very UV sensitive. A polyester is a type of webbing that is not as sensitive 
It doesn't dry rot as quickly. Nylon is almost like a sponge. It pulls in moisture. And when it does that, it has a lot more tendency to stretch easier. You're talking 12 to 15% ratio of stretch on a nylon belt. So if you've got a four foot belt and if you have 12% stretch, you do the math, you can almost get 10 to 12 inches out of that. Well, if you've got a shorter belt, you're gonna limit the amount of stretch. But if you have polyester, polyester's in the vehicle you drive every day. Only, nowhere in the world can you sell an automobile to the public that does not have polyester seat belts. It's a much con more controlled webbing. Doing any type of static or dynamic testing, it's just very, rep uh, very repetitious. Uh, the nylon is very erratic. Same stuff off the same roll can break at different poundages. That's not a controlled environment. That's not what we want to see. So you really need to take the time, look at the belts you're, you're, you're thinking about purchasing. And the hardware is very important. Um, if you look at some of the more cost-effective belts, uh, the hardware is not forged. Um, and there's a big difference. If you've got stamped piece of metal versus forged metal, the strength there is is huge difference. And it may not sound like a lot, but you never know when you're gonna have that big one. And just for instance, a 200 pound man at a 70 G impact weighs over 15,000 pounds for a quarter of a second. You become a wrecking ball and you don't want to start moving. That's where the good belts and the good seat comes in. But it's a lot easier to hold a bowling ball than it is to catch it. So once inertia takes over, you're going to put a lot more stress on the seatbelt system and anything else in that environment. So we, the key is not allowing you to, you to move, and we want to start with a good set of polyester seatbelts. All right, Chris, so I've got a lot of people asking me questions about how to mount their belts, whether they're building a chassis or working on something, they've got these new belts. They want to know where to mount the belts, what type of hardware to use, and, and why. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the mounting of the belts is something that's discussed with a lot of people, and it, it boils down to basic geometry. It's things that we've done in the sled lab. We found out what works, what don't work. You want to start with the center of your hip, and in the pie zone of 45 to 60 degrees is where your lap belt should mount, somewhere in here. Your lap belt should come through the seat in a straight line pattern across your hips and back down to the other mount. You do not want to use your lap belt or your shoulder harnesses to properly position your lap belt. If you install the lap belt by itself and tighten it, it should be catching where it should. Your pelvis can take a 7,000 pound load and your abdominal cavity, if it moves up into there, 7,800 pounds, you have internal injuries. So you don't want the lap belt to be moving around. You want to keep it on your hip flats. Your shoulder harnesses should be 90 degrees parallel to your spine. Once you put your head neck device in there, it actually has a little bit of a 10, 10 degree canter, which is, is what you really want. But if you lay the seat back 20 degrees, your angle needs to work with that. When you tighten your belts, it should pull you back into the seat, not down. The most common thing that I hear from drivers is when the belts are right, you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that's not comfortable, chances are there's something wrong. When you're mounted too low and you tighten them up, it pulls you down, compresses the spine, and pulls you forward. Now you're leaving your, your self room behind your helmet in the back of the seat. When you do hit, you ramp up and have room to impact. If the hammer does not swing, it can't drive a nail. So you want to keep everything tight and secure. Um, the crotch belt, the five point, is an extension of your shoulder harnesses. And using them six points, which adds, gives you the seven point system, really retains you better. But these angles here on your shoulder harnesses and your lap belt, your hardware, when you're strapped in and you hit, you're going to move forward. So you want your seat belt to move with you. If you don't, the belt can load on one side. And once you get a few strands starting to break, it'll rip right through. That's what we call belt dumping. So you always want your, your belt to pivot. Whether you use a shoulder bolt or make up a little sleeve that fits in there and tightens up and still allows it, or do a double shear. Double shear is a way to go with a shoulder bolt. On your shoulder harnesses, if you use hardware to bolt, you're kind of extending this. So what I suggest for people to do on the shoulders 
if you want to grab that there Jay. yeah absolutely okay what we can do here is just wrap the bar and this is what you call a three bar tab and uh, once you get it adjusted you weave it back through so it doubles up on itself but now you got this will it actually will spin a little bit the only thing you might want to do is weld a little hoop to control the belt from sliding sideways that's great yeah makes but sense. this is a really really good efficient way to, to mount your shoulder belts all right chris now that i've got the belts that i really like i've got them installed in my buggy and i'm out four wheeling everything i get them mud and dirt and stuff on them What's the best way to keep these things clean and the best way to keep them uh, properly maintained? Well, if you do read your instructions when you receive your belts, each manufacturer sometimes gives you their own suggestions on how to take care of their belts. What I personally tell people to do is I don't like people using soaps or any type of chemicals and pressure washing because you can be forcing chemicals into that webbing that could actually do it some harm and, and make it uh, start degradation take place. You don't need to let sit, let any webbing set wet because again, especially if it's nylon, it'll, it'll uh, prompt degradation of the belt. It'll start it to rot and then your life of it's gonna go downhill. Um, as far as lubrication, um, I suggest using a good dry lube. Even some of your gun manufacturers that uh, we use in our, our guns is, is a, a nice graphite uh, spray, uh, Teflon that dries on. You don't want anything that's going to pull in any dirt and hold it. Uh, then you just kind of get a grinding effect in there and it, it takes its wear. So a good dry lubricant. Um, when you wash your belts, just go over them with the air hose, hit it with the brush, go over it with a, a damp rag, clean them up. They'll look just as good and you're better off not putting all those chemicals in them. Awesome. Thank you for coming out and helping us with all this stuff. You know, hopefully this will educate somebody to be able to install their seatbelts properly because, you know, on the trail, a lot of times I see guys who are doing it wrong um, and, and I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Our sport is growing exponentially and we need to make sure that we're keeping each other safe. So make sure you share this video. Thank you for coming out very much. You helped help a lot of people out and, and whether you know it or not, you may have saved a couple lives. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Chris, for being here. This has been an excellent topic, and I uh, hope to see you guys out on the trail. Thank you.